Hello and welcome to a new CK3 Tips and Tricks episode. Today we are going to be discussing culture. Now, what is culture? On the surface it seems quite, well self-explanatory, quite a small thing really. It's just a little couple words at the bottom of a character mm -hmm. screen. But in essence it's actually quite a complex mechanic. Now please bear in mind that culture is very much overhauled and expanded upon with the Royal Court DLC. So if you have got that you'll actually have a lot of access to a lot of the mechanics. But if not then access may be limited. But what actually is it? Let's click on it and what does this screen mean? Well, we can see that this Polish Prussian was formed with a hybridization of Prussian and Polish in the year or so. It's a little bit of background, but we have an ethos here, which for us is bureaucratic and we've got cultural pillars and traditions. Now, what do these actually mean? Well, an ethos is kind of a set of perks, a set of perks for kind of this, everyone in the culture, they all share this kind of perks. If I was to reform it, I'll show you the different options that you have. You've got bellicose here, which is more fighting. You've got stoke, which is kind of more defensive, spiritual, which is more piety related. And well, you can see egalitarian, communal, and ceremonious, which give you access to different basic perks and what have you. And this can be obviously quite big role play implications. Now, cultural pillars, what are they? Well, this heritage is kind of um, shared between a cultural group. So, for example, we're Polish Prussian, but also Czech. We'll have West Slavic, Palabian, West Slavic, so we'll share a kind of plus 20 will some little bit of opinion modify there now language is well it's a language uh you can actually learn it with a court tutor in regards to again another part of the royal court dlc you can hire a court tutor and learn language for your children but it's very useful to them basically gives you a opinion modifier if you all learn language now martial practice again basically self-explanatory whoever is going to be allowed to be a knight in your armies or lead your armies and you can change that with piety and of course it does take a long time to establish 30 years that's kind of them trying to balance a little bit now all of these changes if you were to try and change stuff about your culture does take a bit of time to implement that so please bear that in mind when you are playing now aesthetics is things like as you can see naming practices architecture fashion coat of arms military equipment basically aesthetics of what your culture is going to look like on the map and terms of names and things like that now traditions this is probably the most serious part of the culture the kind of where the most of the mechanics are done this way you can get access to cultural men at arms for example we've got connie here because we are polish prussian we've also got forest your wardens because we have managed to hybridize the cultures get all these kind of perks you've got all these to choose from literally like nearly 100 almost i'd say all you can choose from but you need somehow certain there you go somehow some have certain requirements that need to meet for example for this one mountaineer ruralism you need to have 30 percent of its counties and mountain which we do not have of course now in terms of culture the whole map mode is full of them but what what differentiates some of these is that some are hybridized and here we can got formed of Norman and Anglo-Saxon that shows that they've come together, they've been hybridized. And if I wanted to form a hybrid culture, how would I go about that? Well, there's a decision right here which will cost piety, so something to do probably more if you're feudal and I've just got a load of piety sitting about. And here you get to choose your ethos, you get to choose your heritage, and you get to choose your language as well as a martial custom. Then we go to traditions, you get to choose them now, you get the options from both of them, for example, Longos, we weren't able to have access to, but this is more from the Anglo side but this is the colony raids we have from the slavic so basically you get seven traditions selected and you get to basically pick some that you don't really well whichever ones you want and aesthetics again you get the choice and how that is how cultural hybridizations work and you see your in terms of innovations you will unlock ones that have been discovered by one culture not the other because of course culture is the main source behind research of course which is done on the head of cultures Learning of head of culture, of course, is the person with the most counties of their culture in their realm. Oh, Set culture so many times there, but that's how it's done, of course. Here, if you have a look, the fascination from the learning gives you only percentage, and the base progress is the kind of the, the linear number that you advance at. But cultural hybridizations are, in terms of role playing, in terms of min maxing as well, they can be very very powerful but probably the most kind of significant part of culture is this heritage bit which is you know very small on the screen very hidden but with this heritage because we are west slavic it has given us access to forming creation we can unite the west slavs we can unite the slavs but if i was to be for example a latin culture if i was to be italian then i would be able to form rome which i've done in a playthrough so make sure to watch that so that's probably the most significant thing about cultures now what else have we got called you can as well as hybridized cultures, you can diverge your culture. So to click on Polish Prussian, I can diverge your culture. This is basically going to create a branch of the Polish Prussian culture. 
and of course we can't do it because it's 100 years old which as you can see yeah obviously not ideal but this is how it would work again it would be a cost um prestige and you can pick the pillars whichever one you want you can pick the traditions you can choose a name and the color and everything and you can see who will actually accept acceptance and there you go there you go that is how all of that works now cultural acceptance is another mechanic a little bit smaller but what actually is it? if i was to click on for example check what is how do i check that <laughs> see what i did there we have the cultural acceptance 41 percent between my culture and the polish prussian my, and check culture and here we go we get yearly change based on what my culture respect to traditions which comes from of course the dynasty legacy which is another way culture it can be impacted by other mechanics throughout the game now we've got yearly loss of course which is kind of just a baseline that you kind of do to, to, to balance it and get acceptance baseline there as well and a cultural ambassador just basically other things from other dlcs as well that can impact that but basically what cultural hybridize cultural acceptance there's a little bit of opinion penalty for example if i was to go to the kaiser here we have a cultural acceptance minus 15 penalty because the franconia culture doesn't like us in the polish prussian culture too much but if i wanted to hybridize my culture we would need there we go we need 80 cultural acceptance and we do not have that so we're not able to do that but that essentially is how it oh it's oh my goodness 41 learning that is fantastic but that is how cultures works there's massive implications for role play and also min maxing both in terms of your playthrough so please use these mechanics how you see fit i do hope you found this informative and if you have please subscribe channel it just means the absolute world to me i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much and i will see you in the next one ciao